Following down in the sequence in the shooting menu, we have white balance. Now I've already gone over that, so I'm not going to go over it again, but just like I'd mentioned before, some of the settings in the menu are accessible out here on the external buttons and dials. There if you need it though. Exactly. Set picture control. Now that's a unique feature to Nikon and basically you need Nikon capture software to override it or if you want to ever make changes. But the really cool thing about the set picture control is that the camera has four different settings in it. One for standard, which is going to shoot pretty much what it sees. Mm -hmm. The other's neutral, where it's going to kind of tone things down, less contrast, a little bit softer type images, which may be good for portraits. Now Vivid, that's one that I use periodically. When the light's overcast and the light is soft and I'm looking for a little bit more snap to the image, I'll kick it into Vivid and another option is monochrome. So you could actually do black and white imaging within camera. Again, once you get into picture, con into Nikon Capture with your raw files, you can go back and tweak some of those if you want. I prefer to do everything that I can in camera to get the optimum resolution, quality, and less time in front of the computer. These are all overridable. You can use either the default settings that Nikon offers or you can go in and adjust them up and down. The other thing that's cool about them is that you can actually go online and Nikon has additional picture control settings that you can download and insert via a card into the camera. I didn't know that. They do. Now manage picture control is where you do all that. You can tweak the ones that are built in, but if you go to manage picture control, I can actually load the ones that I'd mentioned from Nikon, or if I happen to have some settings that Brad wants, I can simply put a card in my camera, tell it to load it, take the card out, hand it to him, and he can load all of those same settings that I have within his camera. Now, Laura, as I'm punching buttons on the back of my camera here, uh, on the option above that, set picture control, if you go in and highlight one of them and then push the cursor to the right, it takes you into the adjustment so you can adjust the sharpening, contrast, brightness, saturation, and hue of each setting. Is there any difference in doing that there as opposed to doing that in Manage Picture Control and then Save Edit? Well, yes, in that if you want to keep the default ones as they are, you can. And if you want to have a second set where you've tweaked them, it might be a good idea. because. Once you've started tweaking them, you may want to give them a name that, you know, this gotcha. is what I do under certain circumstances. Now, you can do it and just leave it and know that Vivid has been tweaked a little. And in fact, even in the standard setting, I have mine set to slightly sharper than normal because I find I'm always having to do a little bit of sharpening because the low-pass filter in the camera has a softening effect. So I've actually gone into the standard setting and brought my sharpness up an extra notch. I didn't go ahead and rename that because I've already known I've done it and that's right. the only change I made. But thanks for bringing that up because yes, you can customize either setting or either group. Well, we'll skip on down. Now we've got color space. The camera has two options. One is for sRGB and the other is for Adobe RGB. We're back again to Oh, the amount, of Im the amount of information that the camera's capturing. Again, if I'm only shooting for web-based type stuff, and later on I'm going to convert to sRGB anyway, I'm just going to let the camera stay in sRGB. For my purposes, again, I'm outputting, outputting to print more often than not, so mm -hmm. I set it to Adobe RGB. That's just simply a greater color space. So nuances between colors, the, the gradations from tonalities, it's just much more accurate and you're going to find you don't have blocked up colors. And again, just the, just the general principle of you can always start with a lot and work your way down to a smaller file, but you can't start with that smaller file and then work your way back. Absolutely. Work your way up. So. Great analogy. That's so true. Okay, now active delighting. That is, we've talked about how the camera has a limited capability of, of capturing tonal range or, or, yeah, tonal range. So basically, cameras can capture about five stops of light, which is why traditionally photographers always shot sunrises and sunsets because the sun was low in the sky, the light falling on the subject was very even. Well, as the sun rises and we get more and more contrast, something has to give. And oftentimes, you know, we're going to have either really, really dark blacks or overblown out whites. 
active delighting, if you have that turned on, the camera's going to automatically try and make it so that they have, you have kind of a compressed tonal range, if you will, so that it all fits within the frame. And once you're in there, you have the ability of setting it anywhere from low to high or automatic and letting the camera decide. So it's just a way of, of in camera increasing your tonal range. Mm -hmm. Again, I have other ways of doing that myself, so, and I tend to do that type of work later on in, in my editing software. But that option is available to you. Now, vignette control. What that allows you to do is occasionally there will be a lens or two that, the, just the way it's designed and built, it doesn't quite cover the full area of the sensor. It so actually you, gives you the image. But darkened corners. Exactly. So, and if you stack too many filters on, you'll see this as well. Well, if you find that you've got a lens that's giving you that kind of problem, you can simply go into the vignette control and uh, make adjustments. If you're not sure where to set it, it's real easy. You just pick one, take a picture, start with low, just keep moving on until you see those dark corners disappear. That way when you get back into the editing software again, you don't have that vignetting. It doesn't correct for too many filters. It's more just how much area on the sensor the lens covers. And you want to be aware of changing that setting whenever you change lenses because every lens is different. So like right now we both have 2470s on here, we might be set to you know a normal setting, but then we put a different lens on and it has more vignetting. So we adjust for that and then switch back to this later, it's gonna mess with you know the, the, the Right, it'll the have the starts. opposite effect. Yeah. So definitely when you make these conscious settings in the menu, make sure and put a little mental note so you go back later and take them out as not when they're not needed. I think though if you shoot in RAW and then take the RAW image into Nikon Ca Capture NX2, then there's a setting in there that you can uh, sort of adjust the vignette control, yes? Yes. I think. So. I think you're absolutely right. So again, another great reason for shooting RAW. Yeah. It's not a way to fix your mistakes, but it is a way to make little minor corrections so as it's needed. It's a backstop. Exactly. <laughs>